Hello everyone and welcome to today's session on what are Spring Boot microservices. The primary concept of microservices is to design apps in a different way. It is not the usual monolithic method of developing an application. The typical method is for a single code base or for many code bases to be deployed as one entity. This means that it begins with a server then scales as a single entity. The preference is what you do on the coding side where you can have multiple projects all kind of modularity but still end up with a monolithic deployed on the server. Whereas with microservices the changes can follow the same pattern on the coding side but what gets deployed at the runtime is completely different. This is one perspective of microservices. Before we begin today's agenda please do not forget to hit the subscribe button and click the bell icon. So we are going to start with what is microservices then we are going to discuss about where do you start with then we are going to learn about managing complexity in which we are going to compare between SOA which is service oriented architecture and microservices then we are going to learn about what is Spring Boot and at the end we are going to discuss about Spring Boot microservices. So what are microservices? Microservices is a kind of an architecture style which is made up of loosely linked reusable and specialized components that often worked independently with each other. Microservices are becoming increasingly popular and frequently used. This is not surprising given the benefits of this software architecture style such as flexibility and scalability. Mapping microservices into tiny teams within a company also increases the development efficiency. Going into the microservices adventure with simply the benefits in the mind is always a bad idea. Distributed systems add complexity so you must add and understand what you are up against and you should be prepared for it ahead of time. There are many books and articles on the internet which can provide you abundance of information but when you get hands on with the code the story is little bit different. So in this kind of an architecture there are numerous features associated with microservices such as it is highly testable and maintainable. These are loosely coupled, they are deployed on its own, they are basically centered on business capabilities and they are owned by very tiny team. Okay. So personally when I first started studying with microservices the biggest challenges I faced that these were basically all interdependent. Suppose the challenge is when most of the people start with microservices because there are a lot of technologies involved. Suppose you are working on Spring Cloud. It is just one way of creating microservices. With addition to technologies there are a lot of patterns also involved when mapped to the particular technology. Well how do you make use of that technology to create an application but in order to do so you have to learn that underlying technology to use it. So what are the things you need to do in order to make the technology work in the optimal way. Personally when I also face this kind of challenge. So I have picked in an order the best I can do so that we can work on incremental progression and we can learn these microservices. So where do we start with? Basically I want to ask you a question that you should ponder upon. If there is so much complexity involved with an application. So in order to solve that complexity there must have been a good technology stack which have been developed to solve that problem. So think about in something in this way. Suppose we have one big chunk of monolithic application or consider a big chunk of code that is forming your application and you are breaking it out. So by doing the same you are solving the problem of scalability. You are solving the problem of modularity of deployments that you are making changes to one part of the application without having to reapply the whole thing. So you are having advantages. So there are also whole lot of other things you have to also tackle. And you have to make sure that your release process or your end process is fine. So because you have your scalability making sure that your microservices can be scalable. You can have multiple copies and still your application can work. So you have treated some problems for other problems. For example if I talk about building an e-commerce application. Your problem set would be how do I make sure that my shopping cart service is being called from the catalog service or it's kind of very specific. You are trying to solve your problem of monolithic application. But when you break down to microservices these problems would become very more specific. For example load balancing if you talk about was kind of a generic problem no matter what the nature of application is as long as you have broken down a service into an individual microservice. No matter suppose you are building a shopping application or music or streaming website the problems are kind of common. So there are frameworks out there and there are technologies out there which will solve those problems. When we are dealing with monolithic architecture you had to solve for each application independently and separately. 
and these are the solutions provided in the public domain. These are common frameworks and you can use them for something like Eureka. You can use them no matter what kind of application you are building. So that's kind of an advantage with the monolith. You have to learn a lot of technologies, but then you have a proven patterns, proven technologies, no matter what application you are building. Does that make sense to you? So you can see a monolith application broken down into microservices. So you can see a complexity is hidden within the monolithic application. And then you have a complexity between microservices application. Now let's discuss about how can we manage the complexity. So there is two kind of an architectural style. The first one which I want to discuss here is service oriented architecture. It is kind of an enterprise wide approach to an application component development that makes use of. So let's discuss about managing a complexity. So First, I want to discuss about service oriented architecture or we can say SOA. It is an enterprise wide approach to an application component development that makes use of reusable software component or services. Each service in SOA software architecture is made up of the code and data linkages that you need to carry out a given business function such as checking a customer's credit, signing into a website or processing a montage application. SOA first appeared in the late 1990s and has played a major role in the progress of application development and integration. Connecting a monolithic program to a data or functionality in another system before SOA was an option required for complicated point-to-point -point connection that developers had to recreate for each new development effort. Using SOA to expose those functionalities and avoid the need to create deep integration every time. If we talk about microservices as an architecture, the microservices like SOA were made up of loosely linked, reusable and specialized components that often work independently of one another. Microservices also employ a high level of cohesiveness, often known as bounded context. The relationship between a component and its data as a standalone entity or unit with a relatively few dependent is often referred to as bounded context. Suppose if I talk about Service discovery. Service discovery is a pattern when you have an application broken into different services and how you make them communicate with each other. How do you make them discover whom to communicate? So here is a discovery pattern which works as you know solution. So you have technologies which allows you to do so such as you can talk about Eureka as one of the technology which allows you to get the job done with that pattern to work close together. So you have patterns which make microservices work and you have these technologies where thousands of developers are working on microservices going to run into the same problem. So somebody for example created a Eureka which addresses the problem of service discovery. That makes sense. Like in 2000s probably everybody was going into service oriented architecture. That was like the enterprise way of building application. And yeah, it shares a lot of common philosophies with the microservices. You are building a service oriented architecture, something like you are building a service for reusability and you don't have a clear idea where it's going to be used for. For instance, if I talk about if you have an IP locator service built in SOA. So what it does is it has endpoints using SOAP where you make a call, give it an IP. It's going to return the location and right there away you can do it's used across a board across lot of application. When people created this service, they had no idea about which application it's going to be used in. Their objective was to provide a utility. So there's a lot of service oriented architecture concepts all around it, creating a utility. I don't know where it's going to be get used. So let's create a service and keep it there. So whoever wants to use it can use it. But that not in the case of microservices. You can have an idea that what an application is. Suppose you are creating an application. Suppose if I say you are building a flip card using microservices, you are breaking down this application into microservices knowing that's probably the only one use of microservices and you are fine with it. You are not intended for the sake of reusability. It can be potentially be reused when you build the application. But building something using microservices, you can potentially reuse it but it's not a requirement. It's not designed for that. I think that's a fundamental difference. You can think of service oriented architecture, which has a lot of complexity. They wanted to scale for some future use case where they wanted to make it standardized. They wanted to have a very explicit SOAP contract such that they had a service buses to handle communication because who knows something might break in in future. So they had to take a lot of precautions 
and we don't know who is going to be using it in the future. But with microservices, you know very well that your shopping cart microservice is going to get called by this one or the other application. So you can relax a little bit, not about being so strict about the contract you want to be. So this is how a microservice architecture is different from service oriented architecture. Hope you would have got some idea. Let's discuss about the framework called Spring Boot. So if I talk about Spring Boot, Spring Boot is a Java web framework that is open source and built on microservices. The Spring Boot framework uses pre-built code within its code base to build a fully production ready environment that is completely customizable. The microservice design gives a developer a fully enclosed application completed with application embedded servers. Auto configuration, health checks, opinionated dependencies are just few of the characteristics that make an Spring Boot an excellent choice for swiftly developing Java application. Let's discuss few advantages or features of Spring Boot. So if I talk about it benefits as a standalone application. It is possible to build the application jar and execute the program without having to adjust the deployment. Its servers are embedded. It includes pre-built Tomcat, Jetty and undertow application server that do not require any additional installation. This also results in faster and more efficient deployments, which reduces restart time. It is also auto-configurable. Spring and other third-party frameworks will be configured automatically. If we talk about production-like features, health checks, metrics, externalized configuration are all production-like feature. It has some starter requirements. This will give an opinionated dependencies that are intended to do simplify build settings. This also allows for a total build tool flexibility such as Maven and Gradle. Now let's discuss about Spring Boot microservices. If you really want to get your hands dirty with an example of distributed Spring Boot application with numerous microservices, I recommend the Spring Pet Clinic microservice project. This project includes three microservice application, an API gateway and various supporting services such as config and discovery server. This will result in a ready to deploy and test Java web application that requires no configuration. This project which you will do will not only give ready deployments from your IDE but it will also provide a docker ready deployments. This example exemplifies why a team may consider implementing something like Spring Boot for their application design. As there is little configuration required in the deployment, so no server is required and it can be installed quickly and efficiently. As a result, in our recent Java developer survey, we discovered that about 83% of respondents used Spring Boot as a runtime platform. Spring Boot is an essential for any development team that want to spend their time producing rather than configuring the setting up. That was all from our session. Hope you would have got some idea about the Spring Boot microservices. Just a quick info guys. IntelliPad provides Java certification online training mentored by industry experts. The course link of which is given in the description below. Now let's continue with the session.